Hey friends, Kevin Osta here at the Muscle Car and Corvette Nationals, and we're gonna take a look at a very interesting display. This is called the Malaise Era Muscle Display. You can see that there. And the Malaise Era is a time period from the 70s and 80s where American performance cars uh, got snipped because of EPA regulations and fuel economy and and muscle car performance was basically dead. But the manufacturers tried to hang on and still do something cool. So cars like this uh, Pontiac Grand Am, it's an interesting design. It still has bucket seats. It's got sporty louvers. It's got console, uh, but it's a 73 and it didn't make a whole lot of power, but yet it's still a neat car. Um, next to it is a 74 GTO, and, and this was the GTO that uh, was very similar to a Chevy Nova in its style, uh, same platform, but it, it retained that Pontiac shaker hood scoop. Um, again, buckets, stripes, sport mirrors. Uh, this one's actually a four speed. So, you know, Pontiac rally wheels with wide oval tires. Things that, uh, you know, are, are muscle car remnants but moving on to an era where they just didn't have the engine performance i think it's a neat display uh these can ams were beautiful cars super cool shaker hood pontiac 400 buckets console awesome graphics package little ducktail spoiler on the back again the louvers on the windows great looking dashboard very cool cars not many can ams were made this is a 77 parked next to an LTD2. You know, this one is a, a 77 Ford LTD2 Sport. Look at this color combo. Blue, orange, white, red, Ford Magnum 500 wheels. You know, we're seeing 60s stuff carried through the 70s. These, again, pointy sport mirrors. This one's a, a bench column shift, so, you know, not a whole lot going on there, but just, uh, an interesting display. Oldsmobile Starfire. This one's a 305 V8 car. This is a concept car of the uh, uh, Dodge Murata. The Dodge Murata came out in, um, I believe, 1980, 79 or 80. This concept has hidden headlights. It's got the stark two-tone color, and these fender vents didn't appear, I don't think, on the uh, production version. That trim is a little bit different. But... It's a, you know, it's a different time period that doesn't get a lot of love. Trans Ams, we see a lot of. They're always cool. This one's a, a turbo car. Uh, this one's a anniversary pace car, 79. Double whammy with the anniversary colors and the pace car. This one is a pace car on its own. But then we move into a, a 75 Plymouth Roadrunner. When is the last time you saw one of these, right? especially in this kind of shape. I think these were 400s uh, or 360s. Another classy Dodge, a 78 Magnum GT. You know, these had the, the Lucite headlight covers. This one's a T-top. Look at this interior. Awesome bucket seats. Look at the little buckle uh, treatment there in the design. Engine turn panels on the dash. I love the... <laughs> disco ball and the license plate see that you know it's just it's neat it's one of those things at the Musk Con Corvette Nationals where they say expect the unexpected and this is what they mean uh, this is a Dodge Aspen Super Coupe not one but two see the license plate one of 37 uh, not many of these cars made in two different colors this uh, gets our vote for one of the best displays here. This 77 Dodge Charger Daytona. They have that actual dealer display from back in the day. Again, another disco ball. Uh, and a 77 Charger SE. So we're gonna move out of the 70s and go into the 80s. Um, this one here is uh, an Avanti. That was the, the Avanti name in the company was rekindled in the 80s. This is not the Studebaker version. You could see the modern federalized bumpers and the, the uh, 
basket weave wheels and the tricked out interior. And they made a go of that car a couple of times after the original Studebaker went under in 64. 87 Buick T-Type. The T-Type, of course, is a lightweight version of the Regal, but still had the turbo 3.8 engine. Um, again, with your uh, T-Tops, the buckets console. These cars were, without the T-Tops, uh, were rumored to be faster than the Grand Nationals because they were a little bit lighter weight. And speaking of Grand National, we have 87 GN here. Then some more G-Body goodness with the Hearst Olds. And an 85 442. Always like these cars. 442 is luxurious and a good performer. These cars handled really, really well. Another Oldsmobile 442 car. Then we go back into the 70s. This is a 75 Cutlass W25 Hearst Olds car. Uh, super stock two style wheels the hood vents swivel bucket seats right that was uh that was a thing back in those days floor shift console t-tops half padded roof hearst badging black and gold treatment these uh these cars you know the the 442 steering wheel they drove really nice Again, not rocket ships, but they drove really nice. Here's one. The Buick Free Spirit. This uh, is an Indy Pace car from 1975. Something you certainly don't see very often. I love that Free Spirit graphic treatment. Red, white, and blue with the, the Buick Eagle. T-tops once again. And these are uh, a different T-top. I think these are all, these are both Hearst style T-tops on these. Again, buckets, console, blue interior and white. It's, uh, it's 1975 all over again, but an amazingly cool car. White painted Buick road wheels. We move into the 80s again real fast. 3.8 turbocharged. Buick Century, uh, G-Body platform, Ford Mustang, two King Cobra. Look at the, <laughs> look at the upholstery. The orange plaid checkered, you know, 1978 was an interesting time. Uh, 1979, so the, the early Mustang pace car from 79, early Fox body. Then we get into the Ford SVO, here's two of them. And the SVO, is a great looking car, more modern than the the same year Fox body. So this is a, an 85 and, and this one here, I think is a 86. So these had composite flush headlamps before the regular Mustangs did. And they got this really cool scoop. It's a 2.3 turbocharged four cylinder. They've got special 16 inch wheels that the, the Mustang had 15s but the Mustang SVO had these 16s. These cars were designed in Germany. They were designed to be road cars. So the, the Germans tweaked the suspension, um, put a T5 transmission. I believe this was one of the first world-class T5s and uh, really made a car that, that looked more advanced for its time. A detail that I love on these is the antenna um, knock, you know, the antenna blockout panel. You can see it on this one here. All these cars look kind of strange with that antenna sticking up. You can see there, this one has the Indy flag on it, but one of the signature items on the SVO, which stood for Special Vehicle Operations, is the dual plane rear spoiler. Um, SVO taillights were unique with the stripes in them, uh, but that's a nice, designed to be high speed, stable. This design carried over into the German Mercur XR4 TIs, if you remember those. I'm surprised there's not one of those here. Good 80s car. Uh, and then we've got a, a Chevy Laguna S3. This had uh, NASCAR styling and striping in what evolved out of the Chevelle, basically. Luxury and performance. 
and we wrap up our little tour of the Malays area with not one and not two, sorry, walked in front of somebody, but three 1977 Camaros, all of them 163 miles, 457 miles, 4,420 miles, all like brand new. So anyway, interesting time, cars you don't see, things, you know, of course the muscle car and Corvette Nationals, here's a whole row of Charger 500s and crazy Daytonas, and this is the Wellborn collection, pinnacle muscle, but unexpected at the same time at the McCacken Show.